Woke up this morning, it was freaking cold in the cabin, and it turns out it's really cold outside too. <laughs> the good news is we're maintaining like, it's a little less than 30, maybe 25 degrees inside the cabin. Well, see, now the cabin warmth is escaping, so now the thermometer is going up like 100 miles a minute. Wow, it's going to be a beautiful day, though. The nice thing about cold weather is that it usually means that we're getting some sun, and that means we're getting some solar, which is exciting. So everything's already charging. Mmm, super is cold-blooded this morning. This morning, Alyssa is gonna go skiing. Never this... cross country skied before. Kind of intimidated. Can you run? I can run. Then you can cross country ski. And I can ski. Is your seat as cold as mine? It's pretty chilly. We have been fighting a lot of power problems. While Alyssa is away doing uh, some cross country skiing, I want to tackle some of these things. The good news is that because we're getting so much sun, finally our solar panels are finally getting to be put to use, which kind of gives me a chance to free up the generator to do some other stuff. Last year, we had a lot of problems with the generator not wanting to run in temperatures below 15 degrees. We had no idea if it was our fuel or some other uh, mechanical issue. Unfortunately, when summer got here, we had no way to test it. So we had to wait till this year to give it another go. Turns out, it's something that seems to be wrong with the generator itself. It's not the fuel. We've done quite a bit of additives. We've changed fuel types. We've switched stations. We've done a lot of things to try to eliminate fuel as the primary cause. The uh, service center that we rely on for service on our generator they actually contacted somebody in a severe climate in North Dakota and asked, what do you guys do to get these things to run in cold weather? Their answer actually was to change the oil. I'm actually going to do that today. I'm going to switch out to a 530 oil from the 1030 that we normally run. And I want to leave the generator out overnight and just see if that's one of the solutions. We've been having to keep the generator inside, which because it's portable, it's not really that big of a deal, but it's kind of annoying. And at this point, if we got a really, really cold snap, I can't even promise that the generator would run if we kept it indoors. Before I change the oil, I actually want to run the generator for just a little while. It makes the oil a little bit easier to change. If you're looking for a snow scoop, Google snow scoop. Here's a couple of companies that make pretty good snow scoops. One is called Silver Bear. The other one is called a Kaufman. This one we actually purchased at a local antique store for 25 bucks. It gets the job done, but there's some features that it's lacking. Like the heel on this scoop is square, which is kind of hard because when you try to pull it, it ends up pulling the snow. A lot of the better scoops actually have a radius heel. And then also, it allows you to tip the scoop back and to drag it, whereas this one I have to drag flat. The next problem that we have is that we actually have a frozen battery or a partially frozen battery. It's a complex problem. The batteries are used. We've had some extenuating circumstances that have kept us from getting the batteries into their peak condition. We're gonna take a look at this battery today and see if we can't put a heater in here and just warm this battery bank up and see if we can get that battery to thaw out. If you haven't watched our timber framing battery box video, take a look at it. You'll find out a lot more about this battery box project. And you'll also find out that this lid is really heavy. So out of the eight batteries, that we have in our battery bank. Six of them seem to be doing pretty doggone good. In fact, in doing a hygrometer test and keeping an eye on the electrolyte specific gravity, six of them seem to be doing fantastic. There's a couple here that seem to be having problems. So let's see how things are doing. This battery, I highly doubt we're gonna get, oh, you can kind of see down in there. First of all, it's lost quite a bit of water. 
and same with this cell. We're definitely having some struggles. So what I want to do is first of all, I just want to put some heat in here. And I want to see if we can't just warm these batteries up as a group. All right, the generator's been running here for maybe 15 minutes or so, which should be plenty warm enough to give the oil a quick change. Totally botched that one, didn't I? What can you do? Oil changes are messy. We're actually gonna run that most of the afternoon to power the heater that we're gonna put in the battery box. That should get plenty of time for the new oil to circulate through the engine. We'll see if that small little change with a synthetic 530 oil will make this thing a little less cold-blooded. If you watched our solar upgrade video, you recall that GoPower sent us one of their higher end RV solar kits. That's actually been a huge lifesaver for us, but the inverter charger has been giving us some fits and we've been working with GoPower on trying to get this sorted out. The first and main problem that we had is that it wouldn't equalize and it was really confusing. It turns out it's actually a firmware issue. The good news is we're finally actually able to equalize our battery bank after seven months, but we still have a persistent problem. The charger seems to have a bit of a brownout issue. Right now, that's part of what's leading to these battery freezing problems. What I want to do is I want to actually uh, run this this afternoon to get that oil through there, and then I want to leave it outside overnight. And let's run the heater in the battery box and, and see if tomorrow morning when we come out, if we can just fire it right up. So this is kind of exciting. Um, I don't think we're going to get the camera to cooperate. But the heater has only been in the battery box here for about an hour. And uh, actually, I took these battery caps off and there's quite a bit of bubbling going on in there, which means the solar is doing its job and there's actually very little ice that's in this battery. That's a relative term. You don't really want any ice. The good news is it looks like this is actually working. Just getting good charge is the hard part. And like I mentioned about our inverter charger, you know, it's not putting out the way it's supposed to. We're going from bulk to absorb in under an hour. This really confirms to me that we got to get this inverter charger thing figured out. Otherwise, we really are risking this battery bank getting completely damaged. The good news is this cold spell is only going to last for a few days, maybe two or three days. So anyway, we'll keep an eye on it. I'm going to put the lid back down. Uh, looks like Alyssa's done skiing, so we're going to go pick her up. Days like today are the reason, one of the reasons, that we moved here. These bluebird days, as we used to call them on the ski hill growing up, are the reason you live where it snows and winter climates. It's funny, you put up with a lot of snow and a lot of inclement weather and a lot of problems and things, but it's these bluebird days when you live here that make it all worth it. It's the ones that the Visitors Bureau puts on the front page of the brochure. You know the one I'm talking about. We left the generator out overnight. This should be a wonderful test to see if the oil change somehow made a difference. Looks like uh, this morning it's probably around one degree Fahrenheit, and this is definitely a temperature where the generator would not run.
So it's definitely running. So this is progress, but I'm not completely sold. So I'm gonna let it warm up for a while just to get some crankcase heat in there. And then we're gonna put it under load and try to charge the batteries. Cause I mean, that's really what we're trying to accomplish. So the generator's been running for maybe 10 minutes or so, and it's still running fine. Let's put some load on it, see if it'll still run. It's running fine and we got a pretty heavy load on it. So I'm hoping this is not a fluke. It doesn't seem like it because the problems we were having with it before were immediately obvious. I'm gonna try it for a few more nights because we really do need to get this problem solved. If the generator can't run in cold weather, then it's worthless. We do wanna make a quick check on the battery. Hey, things are actually looking pretty good in here. Um, this is the one battery that I was curious about. And we've still got just a little, just a little bit of water that's frozen here on the top. I'm probably gonna run the heater in here again today. Try to get this battery a little bit of love. Well, I guess we'll check back a little bit later today and just kind of see how things are looking. Now we gotta try to figure out how to get the inverter charger to do its job. It's really the last major bottleneck to keeping these batteries running good. And the solar has been a huge kind of not like a life changer for us, but it's made life a lot more comfortable. We have lights we can flip on, we can sleep with a fan now because we have power, which helps us sleep a little bit better on those really noisy, windy nights. Um, and also we have all of our camera gear, drone, you know, laptops, phones, everything needs to be charged. If you enjoyed this video, please follow us on our journey, subscribe to the channel. Also follow us on Facebook and Instagram and the blog. We'll link to all that stuff in the description as usual. See you next time. I think it's time to call the service center and find out what our options are to get a new generator. This dance is getting really old. Mm -hmm.